We are here at the Mila Gallery down in uh, the Art the Design District, uh, the end of Oak Lawn, uh, with Tommy Leman, uh, with Riedel Glassware. And he's here today to convince me that this glass here, which is the it's so clear you almost can't see it, but it's the Riedel Bordeaux glass in their Venom series. Yes, sir. He's here to convince me that wine out of this glass tastes better than wine out of my chosen implement of consumption, the plastic beaker. You notice that the, the glass here is pure lead crystal and the beaker is pure plastic. So we have two pure receptacles. So Tommy, maybe you'd like to pour the wine out into the glass and explain to me when you pour some in the glass and some in the beaker, what do you get from one that you don't get from the other? Well, number one, we, we are firm believers in decanning at Riedel. Um, we believe that all varietals benefit from surface expansion and aeration of the wine and, and really uh, preparing the wine for consumption. We believe in varietal specific stemware and as you mentioned, our Venom Bordeaux glass really handles these well-structured red wines that have these tannic undertones to them um, with great finesse. And so the most powerful red wine is really controlled both in terms of its de delivery to our olfactory and to our palate to really create a balanced, multi-dimensioned wine that has these great layers all put in place. Now I, I taste out of this glass and before I taste, actually, I, I should enjoy uh, a nose. And I see that this wine is full of fruit, but it also has um, a real serious, uh, solid appeal to it. I go to it's, taste. It's fairly young. It's a 2007. It's a 2007 Free Market Abbey Cabernet from uh, Napa Valley. So fairly young. But it's the wine that um, Texans love. Big, powerful red wine. Great with steak. Great with steak. I go to taste it, and I will never ignore that it's a big red wine, but it's got an amazing controlled texture combined with fruit, um, combined with that almost undescribable. Uh, element of minerality and, and just exciting components to it. I go here, and the reason we really do this is because we so often in the industry are introduced to wine out of this glass, and I pour it into this glass, and from the get-go, I have no identifiable character to this wine. Yeah. The plastic cup completely um, kills the nose of the wine. That was the first thing I noticed in the taste in the south of this evening, that the nose is almost undetectable from the beaker. From, whereas in your glass, the, the aromas seem to get trapped inside the glass, concentrating them. I can go into a completely empty glass that has previously held the Cabernet, and it acts as a loudspeaker. It introduces me with great, great uh, force to the wine, and I, I know why I like this wine. I know why um, I'm going to drink this wine. I go here, and I mentioned earlier, it's like a limp handshake. Yeah. There's nothing to it. There's no force. There's no identity. The wine is lifeless out of this glass. What about the, the taste? How is that affected? Let, let's see. I, I think I know the answer, but I, I've, I've got to test it. And in fact, it has quite a negative um, reaction with, with the wine. It, it, this actually, the structure of this plastic glass likens a, a typical industrial glass, a Libby rolled rim glass, and it's a real negative, overly tannic 
reaction that has absolutely no balance. The yeah. message to your brain is so strong about tannins that you lose the fruit, you lose the texture, you, you quite honestly lose the fact that the wine was responsibly, the fruit in this wine was responsibly grown, responsibly harvested, um, aged, and, and um, maintained in, in the bottle. And now it is all about way over the top tannins and um, there's just really no finesse to the wine yeah, left. I can understand how the shape of the glass can affect the nose because it directs aromas up into the olfactory faculties. But how does it, uh, the shape of the glass affect the taste? Well, I am I most identify with um, the inherent nature of the varietal. And so acidic or tannic varietals need to really, really be controlled in terms of delivery to the palate. So acid needs to have a centralized, streamlined delivery to the palate, keeping it away from the acid receptors so that you can fall on each zone of the tongue and identify with that message of the wine. Um, tannins, a too broad distribution of a big tannic wine like this has a really negative introduction with tannins being overly promoted and, um, and all of the dimension in the middle being lost. So hence the narrow glass forcing the mouth to... A slightly narrow glass, tongue. not completely, because if we went even more narrow, something like a burgundy glass, you would find that the, the wine would suffer in, in a different way. It would become a little less appealing, a little bit more one-dimensional. It would lose some of its strength and dimension. Um, too wide of a diameter glass like this is providing as it rolls over a rolled rim and does a broad distribution, uncontrolled distribution on the palate, has is more of a negative reaction in that the tannin is the, is the promoted feature. Great. Final question. I thought the reason for decanting a wine was that when it was old, that would prevent the sediment from getting into the glass. Are you saying there's a different reason? I, well, historically, certainly wines, uh, or romantically, they were decanted to, to do the separation of the sediment. But really, we find that wines benefit from surface expansion, agitation, and aeration. And so the more that you can get the wine in, in, in sort spread out and, um, and circulated, they, they, they benefit. They throw off some of the gases kept to, to uh, protect the wine in the bottle and prepare it for consumption. Tommy LeMang, thanks very much for your time. Thank you for your time.